So, thanks for coming in. You're from Michigan. I am from Michigan, born and raised. Tell us about where you were born, where you were raised. I was born in Pontiac, mm -hmm. in uh, Pontiac General. It's been renamed now. Uh, and uh, grew up on Vaught Street there, walked to Walt Whitman. And uh, then we abruptly moved. And I went all the way up to Cadillac, Michigan. Way there. So I went from urban to rural and, and then spent a lot of time there, my growing years in Cadillac. What was it like growing up there? It was uh, beautiful. Yeah. The two lakes there. Um, it's the people, um, you know, that's the thing I talk about when I talk about northern Michigan is, you know, you get to the four-way stop and you're waved through because people don't have a care in the world. I and know. So sweet. So Everyone's nice. nice. You know, the beautiful thing about Cadillac is the, the people are sweet and they're, 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 everyone's a 3 a.m. call, right? You break down, you can get anyone there to help you. It's homogenous, mm -hmm. so it was nice to go to Central and start experience diversity and different beliefs and thoughts, and that, that, that was really helpful for me. What were some of the common traits? You said that people were beautiful and very homogenous, so then what are those common traits that you had in your, in your city? I would say the traits that I still have today, uh, family first, um, put in an honest and hard day's work. Yeah. I think that that's really, as I tour right now doing live shows with uh, Belushi, we find that that's really a Midwestern trait. And uh, it really, it's, in, it's in, um, embodied in Michigan people. Speaking of cracking people up, so you've got great comedy background from Detroit. From Detroit. Tell me about Second City Detroit. Second City Detroit was, uh, Jim calls his Second uh, City experience um, his grad school, right? I, I, I started out in grad school uh, at Wayne State, and at that point it just wasn't for me. I dropped out of grad school and had the opportunity to audition at Second City. Almost passed it up. I, almost, I was laying on the couch eating Doritos and a block of cheese, <laughs> and I was happy. <laughs> and a friend of mine said, please audition with me. I did. We got in. And from there, I, I spent almost three years. And it, even more so than grad school. It really laid the, the um, foundation for me for comedy. And you find it seems that there's a common thread that we have a lot of incredible performers from Detroit, mm -hmm. including comedians. We have a lot of people. That, why so strong? Why is it all? Where is this community coming from? From living in real, in reality, comedy comes out of it. It has to be based in reality. So we, we talked about um, how much we love Detroit. We talked about the struggles of Detroit. And we talked about our investment of Detroit. And from that was a lot of comedy mm -hmm. and because we love it so much. You talk about investment in, in Detroit or from Detroit. It sounds like um, you, you keep giving back to that. There, you keep performing there. You do more there. You found a theater there. Tell us more about that. Well, the, the, you know, there were uh, some theaters that have, uh, have really blossomed from people, uh, my best friends. You know, the Planet Ant Theater, Hal Soper owns that, and Hamtramck. But uh, originally it was a coffee house. And, we worked on it and turned it into what it is today. Mark Evan Jackson, uh, starting the whole Detroit Creativity Project, and brought us all on board with that. And everyone uh, from Keegan Michael Key and Josh Funk, Naima Funk, Mary Beth Monroe, we always try and get back. Mark Warzaka, get back, get back, get back, and, and, and give. So that these kids realize A, there's a lot in Detroit right now, but B, for them especially, is that they have it. It's not somewhere else. They have the talent. They have the ability. Sometimes you just need the confidence. Why is that so important to you to make sure they know that? I had, I had the ability, but I didn't have the confidence. And I was at Second City. Um, Darren McCarty's band was playing way too loudly outside of uh, across from the Fox. And Bob Saget was going to improvise with us. We got upset, said that music's too loud, we're not doing it. He came back and improvised with us the next night, thank God, and he told his people out here and they signed me. I didn't have that confidence. I would not have had that confidence to pursue that. Mm -hmm. Bob Saget saw it in me. And I, you know, I, I, he's one of my well builders and I thank him every time I, I drink from the well. And these kids need to know that they have a well, they have well builders around them, and they've got to drink from that well. Who 
were some of your well builders in addition to him? Who who were the people from Detroit or from Michigan who saw something in you that were an influence in you and inspired you to go on and do what you do? I, I tell you what, my first uh, professor that I had at Central Michigan University, Steve Berglund, he's still there. Um, he'll be there probably till he just drops dead. Um, and he loves it. He still has a passion for it. And he instilled a strong theatrical work ethic in me. He didn't put up with uh, any of my, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, BS that I wanted to. I didn't, maybe I wanted to skate through it. He wouldn't allow it. John Peaks was the founder of the Boar's Head Theater um, in Lansing, which has since shut down past his retirement. And he was another one. He believed in me. And, but the things that these, uh, that these people have in common is they expected more from me, but they still had the belief. When you think about Michigan and you go back frequently, you said to you bring family, mm -hmm. you expose kids. What do you tell me about? I have five children. <laughs> Not five. Eight to 14 years old. My wife's wow. from Dallas. We met uh, at Wayne State University. And uh, you know my my children love getting back to Michigan. We we go all over. Where'd he go? Um, Michigan is so dear to me. We hit everywhere we can. So uh, a big spot is Torch Lake. We love Traverse City. If people knew the hot art scene that's going on in Traverse City, it's right. great. In fact, I get back to Michigan every other year just to shoot a movie there. We've been up and down uh, the, the, the Great Lakes, everywhere you can think of. Frankfurt, I love. Uh, Ludington, um, in the Upper Peninsula. The kids love seeing Paradise <laughs> up top there. Sault Ste. Marie and the Locks. We've been everywhere you can imagine. What about the places you like to go to eat? The places I like to go to eat. Well, uh, you know, I think for a lot of people, uh, Greek town is a no-brainer. And, but um, uh, Mexican village, like, yeah. oh man, we would make, my wife and I would have a date night when uh, when we were dark on Second City performance nights, and and she wasn't performing either. When we would hit Soshi Milko's, and oh my goodness, I, just thinking about those chimichangas. It's making you hungry. With a margarita, but not <laughs> just anywhere. It had to be there. Wow. It was really really great. Wow. And uh, the, oh, that was Tony's. Up by off of Birch Run, you want a big, huge serving when you're hitting the road. <laughs> Tony's, you can't even get through all this food, and it's really delicious. What I don't understand, I don't understand why Michigan remains this secret. It is gorgeous. Anyone who goes there, and again, I'm doing these live shows, and so there are people in the cast who are not from Michigan. They, they're stopped in their tracks. Mm. It's four seasons, and, and every season has something new to offer. Mm. It has more freshwater coastline than anywhere I can think of, and it, and it has something for everyone. Michigan, baby! It's my favorite state. It's my favorite place in the whole wide world. Nothing's changed, even with my five California kids. They're just wrong, okay? I love Michigan. Say something positive about Michigan every chance you can get.